This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Al Saleh and Hany Balkis. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of February, 2021, and I'm very excited to give you news because you know us right here on Future Talk. We love transportation <laughs> and we love talking about space. But what if I told you that SpaceX, which is owned by Elon Musk, does aim to launch an all-civilian trip into orbit? That is a dream come true for everyone who has ever wanted to travel to space because space tourism has finally arrived. But coming up on Future Talk, Google today is making headlines because they have decided to make our searches become a lot more, let's say, easy to reference since they are launching a new feature that is called the About This Result Information. So this will help you know exactly where is this information coming up before you even click the certain website. Yes, indeed. And we have a very special guest tuning in and going to be kind of contributing today on the show, Imad Haffar, who is the regional tech manager at Kaspersky Middle East. And what are we talking about today, Omnia? We're talking all about WhatsApp because recently they've had a lot of phishing attacks grow fear in many people's hearts. And if you've been a part of this attack or if you've heard about a loved one who has suffered from it, today Imad is going to be telling us all about the different ways that hackers can do these phishing attacks, but also what can we do to protect our Ourselves. Yes, and the lots in store right here on the Future Talk Show. So keep Pulse 95 locked because we're going to be right back. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. Your quick roundup of everything that is happening in the tech world, in the UAE and around the world. Space tourism has arrived. So everyone who has ever wanted to travel to outer space, you may just get a golden chance pretty soon because SpaceX announced that they are aiming to launch this year the first all-civilian mission into Earth's orbit. And this is all being led by a tech billionaire that I'm sure is one of Hany's greatest friends. Yes, Elon Musk, who is the owner of SpaceX, is kind of planning to send us civilians into space. Now, an entrepreneur is going to be joined by three other astronauts for a multi-day journey into space, including one lucky winner of a drawing. Now, it is a once-in-a-lifetime adventure, a journey into outer space on the first all-civilian space flight. Now, SpaceX, which is the company which was started by Elon Musk, said that he is donating the three seats alongside him to individuals from the general public who will be announced in the weeks ahead. So this is kind of interesting because he is just allowing three people alongside himself to go on to this trip mm. instead of being four complete civilians going on board uh, this flight. Now, Elon Musk is a smart man, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing a great job in PR. and he's a marketing he, scheme. He's a great <laughs> job in PR. He's, his PR, I give my hats off to them. They always know how to kind of catch our eyes. So uh, obviously he's going to make it a competition and he's going to draw those three lucky winners to join the entrepreneur into space. But we do know that one seat will go to a worker from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Yes, indeed. This hospital actually treats childhood cancer and pediatric diseases. And the second uh, civilian will actually be drawn from those who enter a raffle. And they're all encouraged to go ahead and donate to that hospital. So it's kind of like a mini fundraiser with a little bit of a gift towards the end and they're all going to be on board the Dragon spacecraft. Yes, again, Elon Musk is a smart man. He's getting someone from that hospital that does treat uh, children with cancer and pediatric diseases. Now, SpaceX did say that during the multi-day mission, the astronauts will orbit Earth every 90 minutes. Now, after the mission, the spacecraft will re-enter the atmosphere for a water landing off the Florida coast. The agency will have spent more than $8 billion on the commercial crew program by 2024, with a hope that the private sector can take care of NASA's need in low Earth orbit so it can be freed up to focus on return missions to the moon and then ultimately to Mars. Now, we all know that space does sound glamorous, but it definitely comes with lots of hard work. So all three crew members will actually be receiving commercial astronaut training by SpaceX on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle and the Dragon spacecraft. So they're going to be undergoing stress testing. You know, they're going to be learning how to operate in micro or zero gravity, which we all know can be a huge load on our bodies sometimes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, last night, actually, SpaceX Mm -hmm. Starship (laughs) Uh, A rocket prototype actually exploded after failed landing in Texas. Now, a SpaceX Starship prototype rocket 
just exploded on landing after an experimental launch in Texas in the United States. Now, uh, I'm hoping this is not the case with the space tourism situation. Hopefully (laughs) not. Thankfully, it is a prototype for Starlink. Yeah. And I actually saw the video of the landing and how the rocket works is, you know, uh, they kind of try to come back to Earth. Like mm. how they how they launched, they try to bring it back the to Earth. The same way, the, the same, same trajectory. The same way, but unfortunately that rocket did explode mm. and uh, now there's actually an ongoing investigation on how it did explode from the FAA in the United States. We'll definitely keep you updated with all that arises with SpaceX, but coming up on the show, we're going to be talking about Google and how they're planning to add a new feature that will make every piece of information that we find on its platform a a lot more easier to reference. Keep all 95 locked. We'll be right back. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Google once again. Now, yesterday we did tell you guys that Google is under fire in Australia because of some things with their government. But they said, hey, listen, let's add a new feature about this result information in your search to help vet websites before you click on them. Now, Google is updating its search results with a major new feature and about this result menu that will let you pull up information from Wikipedia about a website in your search results, which will make it easier to vet sites that you are not familiar with. Now, for you to be able to see the new information boxes, all you have to do is go ahead and tap on the three dot icon on the top right of the results card. Once you tap on those uh, three dot icons, you will go ahead and be able to pull up a short snippet on the article. So according to Google, these descriptions will help provide the most up to date, verified and sourced information information that is available on Wikipedia. Moreover, the new search information box will actually be showing more detailed information on the results. So it will showcase whether or not this is an organic search result or a paid ad. Mm. And it will also show if the site uses a secure connection to provide this information for you as a user. Now, Google says the new result information is designed to help provide additional peace of mind when searching. But it's also easy to see how the new tool could help users winnow out of misinformation when searching for news or health information on Google. Now, it's likely not a coincidence that one of the company's main examples is to, te- is to help determine that a site like The Lancet is a valid source of medical information for the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, again, we're looking at a lot of social media and big tech giants trying to tackle misinformation when it does come to the COVID-19 pandemic because unfortunately a lot of people are being misinformed about whether it's the vaccines, uh, COVID-19 symptoms, or the pandemic in general. Yes, especially the causes of the pandemic. Many people have been creating a lot of conspiracy theories around it. Now, this new feature is rolling out today as a beta, so you can go ahead and test it out, but it's not available for the general public yet. The company will continue to take feedback from the users who go ahead and test it so that they can expand on it in the future, adjust any issues that arise with it. But Google is not offering any hard details on what that would look like just Mm. yet. Yes, now so far it will be for English English language users in the U.S. for mobile web, desktop, and the Android Google app. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far we're not looking at anything for iOS, but obviously soon it will be implemented. And again, tackling misinformation is a very big deal when it does come to the COVID-19 pandemic, the pandemic in general, and the vaccination process. As a lot of people uh, are not getting the, vac- the vaccine, unfortunately, because of the misinformation that they have been fed by people who just don't want other to be safe. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to know that the vaccine is important and a key for us to get our lives back to normal. And the quicker we vaccinate, the quicker we can see each other without a mask. Yes, indeed. And the UAE has had a phenomenal vaccination drive. So when whichever Emirates you are in, you can go ahead and get the vaccine completely free of cost. Let us know your yes. thoughts about the Google's brand new features. I'm excited for it. Anything that would help fight misinformation, I'm all for it, to 100%, be honest. 100%. Adding and fighting misinformation is very important. We've seen a lot of uh, big tech companies do the same. And thankfully, right here in the UAE, we are the top country in the world to be distributing vaccines. So, alhamdulillah. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got your vaccine yet, go out and get it. But 
we're going to have a short break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about with someone I love talking to, Imad Hafar, who is the regional technical manager at Kaspersky Middle East. And what are we talking about, Omnia? We're talking all about WhatsApp phishing attacks that have been on the rise ever since the pandemic began. If you want to find out more about them, make sure you keep Pulse 95 locked because we'll be right back. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Al Saleh and Hany Balkis. During the COVID-19 pandemic, every single person has had their screen time skyrocket because of all the time that we've been Mm -hmm. spending on our own. Whether it was during lockdown or even after lockdown, we've all been relying on messaging apps to help keep us connected with our loved ones. But WhatsApp has definitely had its drawbacks. One of the biggest uh, of them all has been the phishing attacks that have been on the rise ever since the pandemic started. There is one form of attack that has got a lot of people very angry on all social media platforms. And this is exactly why today we are joined by the regional technical manager at Kaspersky Middle East, Mr. Imad Haffar, who's going to be telling us all about them. Thank you so much for joining us today, Imad. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the show, Imad. It's always a pleasure having you on now. Can you go and tell us why have WhatsApp phishing attacks been on the rise ever since the pandemic began? Well, uh, you know, as Omnia mentioned, the uh, screen time of uh, people around the world had increased dramatically during the pandemic and the lockdown. And obviously, WhatsApp has its own share of uh, users and uh, uh, screen time again. Mm. Uh, Usually, cyber criminals, they are after the uh, juicy targets. In other words, they find those platforms or apps or even websites, services even. Mm-hmm. that users are quite often using them. They have a lot and lot of users in there because that maximizes their chances of obviously uh, um, uh, being successful mm. in targeting these uh, um, users. And WhatsApp is uh, no exception to that. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people, especially right here in the UAE, have been complaining of one specific phishing attack that is basically after a one-time password. Can you tell us a little bit more about this attack? Definitely. So essentially, most of the banks nowadays, they have uh, this extra layer of of security when you want to do any online transaction uh, using their Mm -hmm. online banking. So essentially, they send to a predefined number, which is your mobile phone in this case, a uh, OTP or one-time password. Mm -hmm. Now, that password usually is valid for one transaction for a certain period of, uh, of time. Now, any cyber criminal who had uh, access already to an account and they want to do some, you know, uh, illeg- illegitimate uh, transaction, they obviously have to have that one-time password so they can complete the, the, the transaction. Now, if they don't have access to the bank user mm. uh, mobile, they cannot get that OTP and obviously this whole phishing uh, campaign. So they send these phishing um, messages to uh, users that they know they are clients of certain banks mm. or for any other purpose and then they ask them to share that one-time password with another number or mm. the, um, the sender directly. Mm-hmm. Now how can we prevent such attacks? Is it a problem from what's up from the user or from the bank? Well, unfortunately, Hani, it's um, none of those. Mm. Uh, so it's not the bank mistake, it's not the user, nor the nor WhatsApp, mm. uh, to be clear. Uh, the thing is quite uh, bigger than that. Usually, uh, cyber criminals, they go through a cycle called data harvesting. So mm. they uh, go after certain targets to collect information. In this case, the information would be the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the bank client name, yeah. uh, their email address, potentially, their bank details and Mm. then finally their mobile number Mm. and to complete the cycle of the the attack against their uh, um, uh, bank bank account and online banking they need to target their phone as well yeah Mm. Uh, in this case they send them this phishing link simply because they have managed to find their details elsewhere Mm. now probably this would take us to another point the importance of what we share online Mm. where Mm. we store our data what we give away uh, because eventually, uh, through multiple probably breaches over uh, multiple vendors even or service providers, eventually cyber criminals would be able to combine data together and then they create this profile 
of the users, which uh, has all the data they need to carry out this kind of uh, attacks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a question comes to mind, Imad, uh, whenever we're talking about such attacks. What's the difference in how they look like? Like when we're comparing email phishing attacks to WhatsApp phishing attacks, how do they differ in their outside appearance? Well, uh, you know, generally because of the, the different type of uh, messaging you can, messages you can send over WhatsApp and email, I would say that on email it can be more um, um, detailed and more comprehensive, mm. probably even more um, uh, or rather trickier uh, mm. to the user. So usually the um, uh, spammers, they include in the email logos, links, uh, details, a lot of information they want to add just to make that email looks as legitimate as it can be. Mm. Um, on WhatsApp or any other uh, messaging uh, application, really, you, you're limited with the amount of data and even the, the kind, the look of the data mm-hmm. you can send over there. Mm-hmm. But I would say they would use the two medium for two different purposes, not necessarily to uh, acquire mm. the same information or to target the same uh, users or even to go after the mm-hmm. same um, um, targets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. We're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back, we're going to ask you what this hack, what can the attacker do and what does he have reach to? Keep Pulse 95 log because we're going to continue the conversation in just a bit. Future Talk. Tech Talk and the latest tech news. Only on Pulse 95. Pulse 95 Sports News. We know the score. Sports update. Charger Sports Club has earned the crown of the first union championship for fencing in the men's category. This came after the gaining of three titles, as the club received the first place in the saber weapon, the first place in the foil weapon, and the second place in the EP weapon during the championship hosted in the gymnasium of the club in El Hazana. The club's champions earned the greatest number of medals, including eight colored medals, from a total of 12 available. The medals do include two gold, one silver, and five bronze medals in the event that witnessed the participation of 45 players. Sports update. The bow and arrow team youth under 20 years in the Al Habria Cultural Club and Sports Club achieved advanced positions at the country's club level in the Emirates Cup for Bow and Arrow Competition first stage, which was hosted by Emirates Bow and Arrow Federation and Al Habria Cultural Sports Club, with the participation of eight clubs nationwide. Sports update. And in rugby, the 2021 Six Nations will go ahead as planned after France Sports Minister said quarantine restrictions would be eased for the tournament. Organizers were awaiting confirmation from the French government that UK teams traveling to France or the French team re-entering would be exempt from a seven-day quarantine period. France will begin their campaign against Italy and Rome on Saturday. Pulse 95. That I've ever heard Feels amazing the way that it's been lifting me I'm free up here as high as a bird A moment, no, you don't need to cry for me I can't wait to get where I'm going You know that I love to stay But I'm already on my way My love's taking me Oh, I can't hear the choir 
Arabic expressions you've definitely heard, but probably have no clue what they mean. Make your Arab mates smile when it's their birthday by wishing a happy birthday in Arabic. You would say, Kul sane u inta bkhir. Kul sane u inta bkhir. Common local expressions made easy. Learning is earning. Life skills for the future. Versatility equals employability. Empathy, the ability to feel other people's emotions. It is highly important not only in your personal life, but professionally as well. So, how do we nurture its growth? In simple terms, by cultivating curiosity about strangers, but not like an examiner, more as an interested inquirer. Also, by challenging prejudices and discovering commonalities helps. Go forth and cultivate. Easy Tech, Easy, Easy Tech. Today's technology explained. Cut off a flatworm's head and it will grow a new one. Cut it in half and you will have two new worms. Until now, scientists didn't know how this was possible. A special AI computer analyzed and simulated countless scenarios and was able to solve the mystery of the flatworm's complete regeneration in just 42 hours. The machine created a new abstract theory independently, this being a huge step towards the development of the conscious computer. Today's technology explained. Technology. The future is here. Pulse 95. Apps all around. What's worth a click and download? Is your WhatsApp at risk? from a dangerous hack. Now, this is a malicious WhatsApp hack that we're talking about today that definitely has been reoccurring over time. It works, it's effective for many attackers, and this is exactly why it keeps resurfacing. It's a message that many users right here in the UAE and around the globe have received from a hacker asking for a one-time password. What can we do to help protect ourselves? Joining us today is the Regional Technical Manager at Kaspersky Middle East, Mr. Imad Haffar, who's been telling us all about how this attack actually occurs. Uh, Imad, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about guidelines on how we can go ahead and protect ourselves from such an attack? Well, yeah, there are some general guidelines uh, uh, to protect oneself from such attack. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, first of all, we need to be sure that the device itself is protected. Uh, mm -hmm. This includes, you know, the, the physical, if I can call it, physical security of the device, like locking the device with with a uh, uh, with a password, having a, um, a security application on on the on the mobile. That would help a lot. Because in many cases, those phishing messages that we receive, they don't necessarily have to um, ask the user to provide information, like mm. the example mm. you mentioned of the OTP. Mm. In some cases, it might include links to uh, phishing websites, to even malicious uh, uh, object or application. So having a security application on the device would definitely help. Mm. Updating the device software and applications is definitely something we have to do. Uh, one very critical thing also to watch out for is where we are downloading applications mm. from. Mm. So usually when we get applications from um, out of the uh, official uh, web store of that platform, there is a very good chance that this app might be malicious, tampered mm. with, and it looks like, say, WhatsApp, but in fact it's mm. not. It could be something mm. uh, uh, malicious. And uh, of course, the, the topic of education and awareness is quite critical in these cases mm. because even if you have all these measures in place mm -hmm. if the user go ahead and decide to click the link mm. uh, they immediately increases the risks of them being uh, you know infected mm. with something mm. uh, uh, malicious so educating uh, the, the the public and the users of the importance of um, um, understanding what they're clicking on where that link came from where it takes in taking them to uh, what they're downloading, even what they're sharing over the internet is quite uh, mm. essential in protecting themselves at the time and the future as well. Mm. Because as I told you, this is a long kind of cycle that cyber criminals go through to collect mm. and uh, combine data from multiple or using multiple stages. Mm -hmm. Now, Imad, with this hack, what can the attacker do? And when the hacker gets into the WhatsApp, what does he have reached to? Well, you know, and it, it, it really depends on the type of the hack and the application itself. Usually, if we take, for example, uh, mobile 
platforms, these applications, they every application actually, it has its own set of permissions to access yes. certain resources and information mm -hmm. on the uh, on the device. In theory, if a cyber criminal managed to penetrate one of these applications, potentially they could have access to all the um, 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 services and yeah. all the, the, the data on the mobile that the application had access to. Mm. And there is also another chance that if they manage to find a vulnerability within that application, that mm. some kind of a weakness in the application uh, um, um, coding or way of operating, they could potentially exploit that vulnerability and even get access to further details or further information, more sensitive uh, information beyond what the application it used to yeah. have. Now, now, Imad, uh, let's talk about, for example, 10 years ago, a lot of people would have overlooked cybersecurity. But now, as we are going on with the technical technological age, we're looking at how cybersecurity is very important as much of our transactions are done online. A lot of a lot of us pay our bills online. A lot of us order things through our phone. Now, I know during the COVID-19 pandemic, I would use uh, my phone to order a lot of things. So how can we kind of have an extra step of, of, of safety and take that precautionary measure when ordering online? Well, that's a very good question, Hani, because if we look at the past year in specific with the lockdown, almost all of us, we mm. switched to spending our li time and living our lives yes. online. Yes. Even those who didn't before, now they do. And the uh, once we start doing that, it most probably we will continue to do that same kind of online activities mm. uh, for, for a very long uh, period. Yes. So one of the things that we, um, again, probably this takes me back to the topic of uh, awareness and education, because mm -hmm. eventually um, we need to have that kind of understanding when we visit a certain website, if the website is um, you know, safe or not, if the website is actually the website I'm trying to navigate to, mm -hmm. or it's a simply a phishing website trying to steal my information, how did I get to that website? Was it a link somewhere or did I type the address of the website in the uh, browser? Yeah. Is it Does it use encryption and so and so? All this information may sound technical, by the way, but I would say uh, or I would argue that for the vast majority of online users, it just takes a little effort for them to educate themselves how to identify, uh, for example, if the connection to that website is encrypted or not. Look mm -hmm. for the uh, 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 the keypad. Look yes. for the, the the color of the uh, um, the the address bar. If it uses HTTPS or not. These are very simple things to do and to get acquainted with, but they help tremendously when it comes to uh, protecting our online activities. Awareness is definitely the key behind all of this. And this is exactly why we're going to be taking a short break. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about how students have also been suffering with of cyber attacks during the COVID-19 pandemic with remote learning becoming the new normal. If you have any questions for Imad Hafar, make sure you send them in at 4215 Do It This or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Keep Pulse95 locked. We'll be right back. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. Ever since the coronavirus pandemic became a part of our lives, distance learning has definitely become also a part of our lives. Many students have gotten used to the brand new normal of rolling out of bed and instead of putting their uniform on and heading to the school bus, they go ahead and grab a laptop and log in to their classrooms. But with distance learning and online learning platforms comes a lot of risks because many statistics have actually shown that students are suffering from cyber attacks a lot more than they ever did before. Why is that and what can parents do to help their children adjust to this transition? Joining us today is the Regional Technical Manager at Kaspersky Middle East, Imad Hafar, who's been definitely educating us a lot about the different cyber attacks that students as well as adults tend to suffer from on the daily. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to talk to you, Imad, and you always give us education on how to keep <laughs> ourselves safe. But what can students do to keep themselves safe from cyber attacks? And what kind of cyber attacks are being targeted to students? Well, honey, let me first uh, add this, the second question, why the online learning is being targeted. And this takes us back to the beginning of the show where we said that, you know, cyber criminals are usually after the, the big fish. Mm. Obviously, online learning is such a big one uh, <laughs> at the moment. There are reports saying that there are more than approximately one billion school children around the world 
affected by the lockdown and the remote uh, um, uh, online yes. uh, uh, learning large part of them obviously now are online uh, going uh, through their their studies um, so obviously cyber criminals would definitely be after this uh, demographic because to them this is a very huge uh, one and uh, the fact that we had to switch to that mode quite quickly means that there is a big uh, uh, margin for error so there is a bigger chance that they might find something they can exploit they can make use of Mm -hmm. to penetrate those uh, um, uh, victims. Um, we've recently just released a, a report and we were looking at the attacks against the uh, uh, online uh, uh, learning platforms. And uh, to compare the numbers we've seen, uh, I mean, the number of attacks between the second half of 2000, uh, 2020 and the first half of 2020, there was an increase of approximately 60%. Wow. So the number jumped to more than 270,000 attacks against users of online um, uh, uh, learning platform. And here is the interesting number. Mm. This is more than 20,000% increase from previous year, same period previous year, mm. 2019. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? So uh, obviously the cyber criminals would be definitely after uh, these platforms. We've seen uh, the largest attacks been against uh, um, Zoom. We've seen attack against edX, um, even Blackboard, wow. and uh, even uh, Google Meeting. All even these platforms Blackboard? were <laughs> even, even Blackboard. Blackboard. <laughs> and, uh, to be clear, of course, not the platform itself what was attacked, but rather the users of the platform who were uh, uh, targeted. Mm. Uh, in the uh, large uh, or the vast majority of these attacks, they were uh, in the form of uh, adwares and uh, even riskwares. Uh, in that, I mean, in the adware, obviously, the the, um, the malicious application or code, it shows the user uh, advertisements and, and commercial, which may at the same time include some malicious content mm. uh, or include links that could potentially take them to phishing websites and uh, get them into downloading malicious uh, and, uh, objects. And these ads just pop up on the platform. So there is nothing that mm. the student clicked on by mistake or... Um, exactly. Obviously, it depends on how the um, um, the adware itself arrived at the, uh, yes. the device, whether it's a mobile or a tablet or a laptop. So it might be a bit different. But nevertheless, once it's there, obviously mm. it would start and continue showing these mm. ads to the student, to the mm. kid, to the user of that device um, continuously. Now, it might be a bit riskier when we talk about riskware because obviously those are used to deliver malicious content in, in, in uh, most of the cases. So that one, uh, uh, let me say, malware could lead into downloading something more uh, malicious mm. or even more riskier than uh, the original uh, code. Now, we do know the first line of defense, so when tackling hacks, is having an antivirus, but some people, unfortunately, cannot get their hands on an antivirus. So what would be the second best thing to do as a student or as a person in general to combat uh, these random installs? Well, to be honest, Annie, I think uh, even when we uh, talk about uh, antivirus or internet security or endpoint protection uh, applications, any user who can get their hands on one of these, they can use uh, many of the uh, free uh, yeah. implementation applications. We at Kaspersky have our own, but many others do as well. Mm. Um, but uh, the idea is to have that uh, security application on the device because definitely it would be able to eliminate a large percentage of the risks and threats yes, around our children and, uh, and, and users. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, on that note, we have to be careful where we're getting that application from because we have seen incidents <laughs> where a uh, malicious application disguised as an internet security or a security software yeah. being downloaded into the machine, whereas obviously it's exactly the, the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. So even when you're trying uh, to be safe, it's, it's backfiring as well. <laughs> Uh, exactly. And uh, I would say, aside from the, the application itself, probably mm. I would go back to the subject of um, um, education. Um, awareness yes. and education, mm. uh, because that would help us to uh, be aware of the other factors that could uh, put us in danger when mm -hmm. we are online. Mm. Specifically, being careful what we're clicking on. This is, this is very important. Mm. I mean, it's quite often I see people just click on messages and links without mm. even giving them a, a, a good read. 
Mm. We need to be careful what we click on because mm. that definitely uh, would change things. Now, funny enough, a lot of people would download torrents for to kind of <laughs> bypass that uh, the premium antivirus, which would be kind of disguised as a keylogger or a rat, a Trojan. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, you heard it right here first from Ahmad Hafar, the expert in cybersecurity. You guys need to be safe. And yes, we're still in the pandemic. You need to kind of uh, <laughs> be uh, safe be, physically and but uh, also online. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you so much, sure. Ahmad, uh, for joining us today. It's always an honor having you on the show. It's always a pleasure, uh, Omiya. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hani. Thank you, Ahmad, for joining us. But ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude Future Talk. In about four minutes, you guys will hear from the Halftime Show, the only place to be at three with Omar al the man himself. <laughs> yes, indeed. He has lots in store for all of you on what you can do to help improve your emotional fitness as well as your physical health. It is a show that you do not want to miss, but you can catch us again tomorrow, same time, same place from 2 to 3 p.m. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Pulse 95.